Good morning guys, welcome to today's video. It's Thursday, it's kind of rainy outside today, but I wanted to just tell you guys something, update you on something that I shared. Basically, I told you guys that I was taking this spirulina organic uh, powerful antioxidant vitamin. I shared it with you guys like maybe a week ago. So I've been taking it. This is what they look like. Pure green. It's basically seaweed. It's blue green algae. This stuff is magical. So if you're young, you might not notice a difference on it, but being older, holy heck, this stuff gives me energy for days, like even more energy than I already have. It's like millions of vitamins and minerals, natural vitamins and minerals that your body just absorbs so much easier. And you guys probably know that as you get older, it can be harder to absorb vitamins and minerals, especially like supplements. They work, like they work. I gave them to my friend who's a bit younger and I said, like, try these. And she said that it makes her feel full faster and that she doesn't eat as much. She's not as hungry. And it, they also work as a, they work as uh, appetite suppressant. They work as an energy boost. They're antioxidant. They fight cancer. They help your cells fight cancer. They are full of B vitamins. I'm B12. I'm low in B12. It's like my only big issue besides having a backache. Um, but yeah, like that stuff, it works. There's a bunch of different colors of algae. There's like red, white, brown, blue, green. There's like a bunch of different colors. And they all kind of do the same thing with uh, emphasis on other things. But then there's other algae that you can get. One of them literally binds to your cell and gets rid of bad stuff. So prevents cancer. It increases your chances of not getting cancer and of getting better. It's like a, such good stuff. Like when I try something and it doesn't make any effect on me, then I'm like, whatever. But this stuff, I feel it is so good. Quick update on our babies, our inside babies. They are starting to get a little bit bigger. I had to raise the bed and actually it looks like I could raise it even a little bit more. It gets cold at night, so I don't want to, but they're getting bigger. We still don't know the gender. I think I have two girls and a boy, it looks like to me, but you can never tell. So we have five baby chicks so far this season and we have all these ones in the incubator. I know I told you guys this before, but we tend to raise our, or hatch our chicks in the fall versus in the spring. And we all love it so much better because there's less going on for us animal wise in the fall and in the winter. So it's easier for us to concentrate on them, to focus on them. And then by the time spring comes, we have grown up chickens that we can sell, which go for a lot more money. So better for Sophie and her little chicken business. I love the guineas. I actually love them. Oh, I have a video. I have to post it of them all eating out of my hand. Aha, uh -huh, Penny. Don't you even do it. Oh my gosh. Hey, no. <laughs> Did you guys see that? She was going to make a run for it. No, no. I have the gate open. She's like, I'll go out there. She knows exactly what she's doing. She's done it before. <laughs> She watches for that gate to open. She knows where the good grass is. Uh-oh, no, come on, get. No. Tell me it's fall without telling me it's fall, you guys. It's time for the round bale. She's nervous of the truck, but she's ready. She's willing to break it, brave it. She's getting ready to run for it. Uh-oh, now lady's here but she doesn't understand what's beyond the gate uh-oh we're waiting for the girls <laughs> all right yes it's uh it's the yearly round bale it's the burr months it's the months that we have round bales you can't reach look she's throwing some on the ground for you Hold on. I'm smarter than you think, you guys. I'm being fenced in now. <laughs> this one knows and this one knows. They always, the grass is always greener on the other side of the fence. I should have known that they would all come running. There was nobody here and then poof, they heard the truck. <laughs> Did they all just fly at you? The ducks just flew at you? <laughs> <laughs> uh oh. 
Get in there, you. We are kicking everybody out. <laughs> Does it taste better in the truck? Like, what the heck? One by one, they are. Put your head up, straight up, just for me. <laughs> one by one, they're leaving. All we need now are for the goats to arrive. Yep, that's the kind of luck I have. <laughs> Nobody's happy about this. <laughs> Don't come to me. Hmm. Usually she only lets me or Sophie handle her. One left, you guys. Just the baby, just the little one. Two left. They're like, yeah, we can finally get the hay. Go out, don't come in here, this is not for you. And Willow will never let anybody touch her except for Sophie, not let anybody else catch her but Sophie, ever. Oh, the chicken got in. Oh, good, you're a good girl. <laughs> I'm more in a chicken. All right, there she goes. She's a good one. <laughs> All right, now, Back to our regular scheduled program. What a mess we made. So uh, some people suggested that we add a round bale, like add another one, because we have six horses. And when you get up over like four horses or whatever, there's always like, there's always hierarchy and horses bossing other ones around. A few of our horses could stand to miss a meal or two, but that's not how we roll. Feels good, you guys. It feels good to be in the burr months. They're gonna put the net on there so that they can't just eat all day like they're used to. It's time to go on the winter diet. You're probably thinking a round bale is not a diet, but it actually is for us because luscious hay fields is not a diet, but a brown bale. But a round bale with a net on it is definitely a diet for them. You guys, this is where Posey sleeps all day. Did you guys see it? There we go. There's another chicken. I bet you she has a bunch of eggs under there. Come here, little chicken. You can't lay on eggs. You have to go in the coop at night. I know. Holy moly. What in the world? Oh. These chickens are literally going to be the death of me. My friend was here the other day. And her little kid. Uh oh. Her little kid collected eggs and she collected so many eggs. And I'm like, oh good, those are all the eggs that we have. Nope, wrong. Let's see, two, 13. Lucky number 13 eggs. I give everybody that walks on my property eggs. I'm like, here, take eggs. So I have 13 right there. And now I probably have about 24 in the chicken coop I have to collect. Sylvia has a show this weekend, super fun show. She said, she just said she's not gonna place. That's not why we go, but I wanted to say something to you guys. I wanted to, so today when I was reading my book on my phone, I got a notification and I don't know what, what social media it came over, but it, somebody sent a, posted a comment and it said, Laura, really mean, like really unkind, nasty. Your saddle is so far, her saddle is so far backwards, do better, that's all I saw. Do better Laura or something like that. Yeah, she go, she asked Lame if her saddle's too far forward. So, I don't so know. anyways, I wanted to mention it because Hi, no. the thing about saddles is that almost everybody puts their saddles way too far forward, include, including us, like we've all had to learn not to do it. The first time the saddle fitter came, they made a Sophie put the saddle on and they said to her, is that where you put it? And Sophie said, yeah. And they said, good, because that's where it goes. Most people always put the saddle too far forward and it's just like a huge thing. 
So anyway, we learned. Sophie was the first one to really get it right and perfect her saddling skills. I appreciate that person giving me the advice to put the saddle more forward. Unfortunately, it doesn't sit with what we know and what our professionals tell us. And we can see when her saddle is too far forward, we can see instantly that she doesn't like it. So we're gonna stick with what we know. So Sophie's gonna ride today and get ready, practice before the weekend. It may be fall, you guys, but it feels nice out. It's cold in the nighttime, cold in the morning, and then gorgeous during the day. Right. She's so mad. It's gonna, it's just gonna be like a walk trot ride, just a warm up, just a fun little ride because they're working on slowing her down. She has like a lot of fin, oh, she's got her head down so nice. She's got a lot of fin in her and she's got a lot of go in her and Sophie's always having to like half halt, half halt, half halt. And so it kind of makes it look like they're fighting. And she's working with the trainer and they're trying to work through all of that. And her last lesson, I actually have it still to edit. I'll probably edit, I don't know when, this weekend. The last lesson, all they did was work on slowing down. In fact, the trainer was like, you know what, Sophie? You can, cause Sophie was getting tired. You can stop when you slow her down. And then Sophie figured it out. Pretty, that worked pretty darn fast. Sophie said, yeah, that worked really good. But the one thing that Sophie loved about Finn, like one of the things that she, the reasons that she loved riding him was because he was fast and he was forward. She's like me, she likes a, a horse that goes forward. She'd rather half halt than push. Another thing the lady does is that as she goes down the hill and she balances herself, she likes to really balance herself. Like she's got big movement. But I love that we have this little hill back here. It make, when Sophie gets into like a flat arena, she loves it. It makes such a difference. But also, this has really been building up her back end. Another thing that we're really careful about with Lady is that we don't, we haven't taken her to any shows and done any cantering because it's like a new thing for her and she's still mastering it. Look at her. She's actually going quite slow. Yeah, because I'm making her. Good. We want all the first shows that she goes to to be happy experiences. And she kills it, you guys. She is such, such a good girl. Wow. She's really putting her head down. Yeah, she's starting to really put her head down. It can literally take a year. Good girl. Pet her. It can literally take a year for a horse and a rider to really click. And these guys have one thing that is so super important. They have a connection. They love each other. That horse loves her. And she loves Lady. So I believe in them. Comment below how long it took for you and your horse to get where you want it to be. Wow, that head. She's, she loves it. She loves the flat. <laughs> Hold on and pray. That she does not fall on her face. She wanted to try cantering from a walk. She did so good. Uh, this horse, man, I love her. Lots of carrot stretches for this girl. Sophie's been doing lots of carrot stretches. Food is such a motivator for this girl. I just love sitting out here in the barn and letting Sophie do her thing. I don't know what happened, but when we were in the horse field earlier, the ducks saw Sophie and they flew up and flew straight at her. They've never ever done that to me before. They always come wherever I am, but they don't fly at me. Oh, that was crazy. Anybody who's watched this channel for any length of time knows that I never get sick, like never. But I swear, I feel almost like I'm about to get a cold. I have like a bit of a headache, a bit of a like tickle at the back of my throat. And that's how it always starts for me. I always start to get sick. I'm like, oh. Am I getting sick? And then poof, it's gone. It's just gone so fast. I feel like maybe I even have like a slight fever. I just want to like sit down and cuddle up in bed. But we have a big weekend, so I can't get sick. So pray. Anyway, that is it for today's video, and we'll see you guys tomorrow. Don't you know that you're beautiful?